They can exist nearly everywhere, anywhere, in water and air, on clothing, beneath nails, and on skin, in bodily fluids, and on surfaces. You did that, man. Yes, you did. You did that. You did that. Look, this slide, look, lay back in your mind. She got to look at my slide. I should have went first. <laughs> but have useful functions like yogurt, cheese, and some mix. There are harmful organisms that cause infection and disease when they enter the body. When we are cleaning our salon, we are trying to reduce and prevent the spread of these organisms. These are a lot of different definitions. Um, I don't know, it was one of my boy and my girl that's not working. Okay, no, so. Direct is he all right? <laughs> transmission of blood or body fluids through touching, including shaking hands, kissing, coughing, sneezing, and talking. That's why he gave me all the kids. <laughs> She's just nasty. My students do that. You mm -hmm. ain't dead. That's them too, right there. So, the infection you have invasion of body tissue, disease causing pathogens. We already learned about microorganisms, parasites, or organisms that grow and feed and shelter on a, another organism. Um, toxins are various poisonous substances produced by microorganisms. And virus is a parasitic submicroscopic particle that infects and resides in cells of biological organisms. Cacti, dipacata, all those are cacti. Or ca <laughs> ca <laughs> ca I think they need to say cacti. And then we have the psyllium <laughs> and spirillia. So the, the coxy. They cause abscesses, boils, pustules. That's the staphylococci. The streptococci cause strep throat. My boy got strep throat. His throat hurt. And then um, the diplococci, they grow in pairs and they cause pneumonia. Um, the bacilli are, they cause tetanus, like lockjaw flu, typhoid fever, tuberculosis, and diphtheria. And then the spirilla, they cause syphilis. Cocci rarely, or coxy rarely show active cell movement or motility. They are transmitted through air and dust and the substance they settle in. So this, this is one by one. He coughing, he's sick, it's coming out, and then they're floating through the air. Um, with the um, this is the bacilli. They have cell movement and they have hair like projection. So they move on their own. This is nasty. Like in liquid and stuff. Mm. So this is um the ones that don't move by themselves. SpongeBob spitting on people, and then <laughs> this one moves alone. He's ain't spitting on people. <laughs> <laughs> okay, they see growth and reproduction. They have a life cycle. They may affect their own food, whether inside or outside the body. Y'all had to get my daughter. Uh, a spill on this because she she's hitting puberty and getting musty. Mm -hmm. I had to explain to her that the bacteria on your skin is eating your sweat and pooping on you is what's mm -hmm. making you musty. So that's basically what this. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. That's for real. Say that again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, say yeah, say it again. So basically, my daughter's going through puberty. She get a little musty. Mm -hmm. I had to explain to her that the bacteria that live on your skin is eating your sweat and pooping on you, and that's what's making you musty. I don't so know I don't have a problem with her being musty no more. Cause she realized how nasty it is to be musty. I know. I did not know that. <laughs> yeah, basically, this was saying that the um the bacteria growth and repro reproduction continue. The cells can multiply every twenty to sixty minutes, and the pathogen Staphylococcus can increase its cell division every twenty-seven to thirty minutes. So this is it growing in the background. That's how fast it grows. How Sometimes you might go to sleep and you don't feel bad, and then when you wake up, you feel terrible. Because yep. it's been growing all night. Mm -hmm. And y'all see it growing in dark, warm places. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't say that. Yeah, so go back to going dark, warm places. Sorry about that. So we, we ain't going to mess with it. So no infection can take place without the presence of pathogenic bacteria. Mm -hmm. Um. And it's telling you about how infection occurred again. A local infection is indicated by a bull or pimple that contains pus. 
There may be inflammation, a condition in which the body reacts to injury, irritation, or infection, and is characterized by swelling, redness, heat, or fever and pain. Cocci rarely, or coxy rarely show active cell movement or motility. They are transmitted through air and dust and the substance they sell in there. So these, this is one by one, you see coughing, you see it, it's coming out, and then they're floating through the air. Um, with the, um, this is the bacilli. They have cell movement and they have hair like projection. So they move on their own. This is nasty. Like in liquid and stuff. Mm. So this is um the ones that don't move by themselves. Swing about spitting on people. And then <laughs> this one moves alone. This ain't spitting on people. <laughs> okay. They see a growth and reproduction. They have a life cycle. They may affect their own food, whether inside or outside the body. Y'all had to give my daughter a uh, a spill on this because she she's hitting puberty and getting musty. Mm -hmm. I had to explain to her that the bacteria on your skin is eating your sweat and pooping on you is what's mm -hmm. making you musty. So that's basically what this house Excuse me? Mm -hmm. That's for real? Say that again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, say it, yeah, say it again. So basically, my daughter's going through puberty, she get a little musty. Mm -hmm. I had to explain to her that the bacteria that live on your skin is eating your sweat and pooping on you, and that's what's making you musty. I don't so know I don't have a problem with her being musty no more. Because she realized how nasty it is to be musty. I know. I did not know that. <laughs> now, basically, this was saying that the um the bacteria growth and repro reproduction continue. The cells can multiply every 20 to 60 minutes. And the pathogen Staphylococcus can increase its cell division every 27 to 30 minutes. So this is it growing in the background. That's how fast it grows up. Sometimes you might go to sleep when you don't feel bad, and then when you wake up, you feel terrible because yep. you've been growing all night. Mm. Mm -hmm. And y'all see it growing in dark, warm places. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. I hate to Yeah. So go back to going dark, warm places. Sorry about that. So we we ain't gonna mess with it. So no infection can take place without the presence of pathogenic bacteria. Mm -hmm. Um. And it's telling you about how infection occurred then. A local infection is indicated by a bull or pimple that contains pus. There may be inflammation, a condition in which the body reacts to injury, irritation, or infection, and is characterized by swelling, redness, heat, or fever and pain. Mm -hmm. Infection. Mm -hmm. um, staff can be picked up on doorknobs, phone handles, work surfaces, unsterilized tools and implements, as well as by skin to skin contact. And the staph bacteria infection is extremely resistant to antibiotics. Um, the one that is extremely resistant is MRSA, methicillin resistant staphylococcus blah, blah, was generally found in people <laughs> with weakened immune system. So, uh, so MRSA is also found in perfectly healthy people. They just carry it around and pass it on to infected people. They might not, I mean, they pass it on to like unhealthy people. It might not show up in them, but somebody with a weakened immune system mm -hmm. and they get boils and stuff. And acne is also a form of MRSA. And um, that's why it's vital to clean and disinfect your tools and implements at the salon to reduce the impact of these resistant bacteria on the community. Communicable, communicable when expressed from one person to another by contact. And then some of the most contagious diseases that prevent the styles from working are tuberculosis, Common cold, ringworm, scabies, head lice, and viral infection. This is lice. Mm -hmm. And um, the chief sources of contagion are unclean hands and implements. So, like Opa said, wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. <laughs> Everybody wash their hands. Everybody wash your hands. <laughs> so, contagious disease can also be spread by open sores. Plus, mouth and nose discharges, sharing drinking cups, telephone receivers, and towels. And uncovered coughing and sneezing and spitting in public also spread germs. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Look at him blowing his breath. Sneezing can be transferred in the salon when microorganisms enter the body through breaks in the skin, inadvertently caused by hair cutting, snipping with the clippers, burns from chemicals, waxing, facial treatments, tweezing, and shaving. While natural stylists might not perform those services, it's important to know that the client may have a history of being exposed 
to the bloodborne pathogen by getting services elsewhere before they get to you. So just make sure you kind of treat everybody like they kind of have something mm -hmm. whenever you are in contact with them. Just keep yourself safe, keep them safe, keep everybody safe. Hepatitis viral infections. Hepatitis is a bloodborne virus that causes disease and can damage the liver. Hepatitis can be present in all bodily fluids of those who are infected and can live on the surface outside of the body for a long time, which is why it's vital to thoroughly clean and disinfect all surfaces that are in contact with your clients. Most common hepatitis varieties that appear in the salon is hepatitis A, hepatitis B, and hepatitis C. Hepatitis D also occurs but it basically comes from hepatitis B, right? Okay, so HIV and AIDS. Um, these are part of our viruses. Human immunodeficiency virus is a bloodborne virus that causes acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, which is AIDS. HIV weakens your immune system and its ability to fight off infections and its ability to fight off cancer. Um, it's spread through contact with infected blood, bodily fluids, secretions, excretions, except for not from your sweat, mucous membranes, and non intact skin. The virus that causes HIV is shared mainly through the sharing of needles. And people are using like IV noodles to do drugs. If they share it with somebody that has HIV, they're likely to also get HIV <coughs> and unprotected sexual contact. There's no record that anyone has ever been infected by HIV at the hair salon. However, if a person is cut, the tool with HIV is cut, the tool is contaminated and must be cleaned and disinfected. Not properly cleaned and disinfected puts you and others in the salon at risk for infection. Fungi and fungus. Fungi are microscopic plant parasites that include molds, mildews, and yeast. They can produce contagious diseases like ringworm. Mildew is another fungus that affects plants or grows in, on inanimate objects but does not cause infection in the salon. Tinea is the technical term for ringworms and is characterized by itching, scales, and sometimes painful circular lesions. There are three types of tinea, and it is tinea capitis. <coughs> it's characteristic by red papules or spots at the opening of the hair follicles. Tinea fibosa is characterized by dry, sulfur yellow cup like crust in the scalp called scutula. Uh, tinea barbae is most likely to, to result from hair services. It's also known as barber's itch. It is a superficial fungus that commonly affects the skin. Mostly adolescent and adult males experience these inflamed and non inflamed patches on their face in the nape of their neck, and it basically comes from dirty clippers. Parasites. Parasites are living organisms that feed, grow, and thrive on or in a host organism. Parasites need a host to survive. Parasites can be both internal and external. Pediculosis capitis is the infection of the hair and the scalp of head lice. As these parasites feed on the scalp, it begins to itch. Lice are transmitted from one person to another by contact with infested hats, combs, brushes, and other personal articles. Proper practicing of state board approved cleaning and disinfection procedures will prevent the spread of these infestations. infestations. You should not perform a service on anyone with head lice. Any client with this condition must be referred to a physician or a pharmacist. Scabies. Uh, is another contagious disease. It is caused by the itch mite. Severe itching occurs when the mites feed and burrow up underneath the skin. The skin becomes inflamed with blisters and pustules, which is like pimples with pus in it, from this infestation. Practice extreme care to clean and disinfect all your tools. You're not required to perform a service on anyone who has any contagious disease. As a professional, gently and discreetly tell the client your concerns and refer them to a physician. So would you, how, how would you do that? If, if you saw, if you, when you're doing a client, can you show us the wrong way to do it? Look at it like, ew, uh-uh, honey, I can't do this. You nasty, <laughs> what you got on your arm? What you got on your head? Oh, look, 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 look,
say, you know, I, I saw that you have a little inflamed section here on your body. Um, I don't really want to touch that and affect that and possibly help you be more inflamed or spread this, whatever it may be. If you could go see a pharmacist or a doctor before you come back and before we perform that service, that'd be great. I like the way she said that because she yeah. didn't say, I don't want to infect me. She said, infect you. You know, making it, mm -hmm. it seem, worse for you. Right? Yeah, yeah. It, it, it makes it seem like you really Not care about right, that. Right, right. All right. I think it's my last slide, y'all. Immunity. Immunity is the ability to neutralize pathogens that have gained interest, entrance to the body and to protect the body against infection or illness. The immune system is an incredible protection mechanism. The immune system is made up of white blood cells, proteins, tissues, and organs that defend the body against millions of bacteria, microviruses, toxins, and parasites. Naturally acquired immunity is partly inherited and partly developed through healthy living. An example of naturally acquired immunity is the transfer of antibodies in the placenta from mother to fetus during pregnancy and after birth from breast milk. Artificially, acquired immunity is the immunity that the body develops after overcoming a disease or receiving inoculation which is like a flu vaccination or have an exposure to natural allergens such as pollen cat dander and ragweed and that's it that's all right good, good job, job. Good job. reducing contaminants reduces the risk of infection there are three ways to clean implements Wash with soap and warm water. Scrub with a clean disinfected brush. Use ultrasonic unit. Use a cleaning solvent. I only put two. <clears throat> okay, the second step of method one is disinfecting. This eliminates all bacteria, fun fungi, and viruses, but not spores. Disinfectants are not for use on human skin, hair, it's just some of the hair I got in my and um, or nails. Always read and follow manufacturer's directions for disinfectant. Decontamination method, decontamination method two. It involves cleaning and sterilizing. Sterilizing we already talked about the cleaning. It's the same for method two. So sterilizing, sterilization is the process that completely destroys all microbial life, including spores. So that's what the X is for, it gets rid of that. It is the highest form of decontamination. Sterilization actually kills germs, including most resistant forms of bacteria spores. A high pressure steam autoclave and that's the best I could find um, was a little fire inside of a unit. But a, um, a high pressure steam autoclave is used to sterilize. Dry heat forms of sterilization are less efficient and requires more time at higher temperatures. Dry heat sterilization is not recommended for use in salons. The CDC, Centers for the Disease Control and Prevention requires autoclaves to be tested weekly to ensure they are properly, properly sterilized, no, that they are properly sterilizing implements. Any questions? Yeah, we're going to learn about infection control uh, principles and practices. Um, Chapter one, I was responsible for pages 26 to 30. Um, we're gonna go over the introduction, the why study infection control principles and practices, regulatory guidelines for health control, occupational safety and health administration, OSHA safety data sheets, SDS, Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, and states. State and federal regulations require that certain preventive measures be taken against the spread of infectious disease and germs, or the salon operated business can be shut down. Each state has specific regulations that addresses the responsibilities of the salon owner, as well as the renter of the salon booth and chair. These regulations are standardized health and sanitary codes 
the all natural hair, hair care specialist braiders, locticians, and barbers must comply with. Okay. Um, Occupational Safety and Health Administration, known as OSHA, is a federal agency created as part, part of the U.S. Department of Labor to regulate, enforce safety and health standards to protect employees in the workplace. OSHA was developed to regulate, protect, and inform employees about exposure to potential hazards or toxic materials in the work environment. Your primary functions are to regulate, monitor, and ensure. The braid stylus is vulnerable to daily exposure to bacteria. <clears throat> although natural stylus deal with chemicals on the hair, wait, although natural stylus do not deal with chemicals on the hair, other chemicals in the salon are used. Antiseptics, cleansers, cleansers, disinfectants, styling aids, shampoo, and conditioners. Since 1970, all chemical manufacturers and importers must analyze and communicate any potential hazards associated with their products. Uh, a finalized, a finalized information is put into, all finalized information is put into the safety data sheet, the SDS. It is important for natural salon professionals to develop a system. This system must be uncomplicated, concise, and follow state procedures, either a written plan or checklist of procedure, procedures that ensure safety and that emphasizes a responsibility to protect and provide services for integrity. Okay, the safety data sheets, SDS, formerly known as material safety data sheets. This contain manufacturers' information about product safety. This includes names of hazardous ingredients along with specific codes, the physical and chemi chemical characteristics of the product, proper handling procedures, precautions, precautions to reduce risk, Procedures in case of accidents or overexposure and warning about flammable or explosive. Also provides information on how to dispose chemicals in an environmentally safe way. The federal and state laws require salons to obtain SDS from the manufacturer or distributors for each product. All salons and schools are subject to inspection by OSHA and state boards of beauty or beauty enhancements, that's what the state or not us. Um, both require that the SDS be kept available at all times during salon business hours. You can be fined <clears throat> if you do not have an SDS available. Each employee must read the SDS <coughs> information whether they use the product or not. How to organize your salon SDS. Keep a record that each employee has read and is knowledgeable about the usage and disposal of all hair products, disinfectants, sanitizers, or other solvents used in the salon. This can be downloaded from the manufacturer's website and placed in three ring binders for everyone to read. You must place your SBS binder near the front desk and the back bar. Each time a new product comes into the salon, it must be added to the SBS binder. Each employee must sign and acknowledge that they have read that information. Okay, Environmental Protection Agency, also known as EPA, they set high standards for manufacturers of products that claim to kill germs, fungi, or viruses. All disinfectants must be registered with the EPA. EPA registration number is given to products that have the highest level of germicidal, Fungicidal or biocidal disinfectants. Okay, you have two types of EPA disinfectants. You have your hospital disinfectants. They are effective for killing bacteria in the blood or bloody fluids on the implements and surfaces. The chemical agents are used to destroy most bacteria and viruses that cause disease. They are not to be used on the skin. Only on only can be used on non-porous surfaces. The non-porous surfaces um, include surface equipment, implements, furnishings, floors, walls, and communication equipment. Um, how do you pronounce this? Tuberculosis. Tuberculosis disinfectants are chemical agents that are known to kill the bacteria that cause tuberculosis a bacterial disease that is transmitted through sneezing and coughing. 
This bacteria and spores, which are harder to destroy and create sores. Tuberculosis, wait, more time for me. Tuberculosis, thank you. Are extremely powerful and must be used with extreme caution. Can be harmful to salon tools and equipment. Checking your state to determine that the products you choose comply with state requirements and are EPA approved. Okay, state compliances. Each state has a regulatory agent that exists to protect the salon industry and the consumer's safety and the health and well-being of the community. This includes the license, licensing department, state board of natural hair styling, and health department. The state agencies enforce the rules or regulations with salon inspections and the investigators of consumer complaints. Penalties vary from state to state and include warning notices, fines, probation, and suspension or revocation of licenses. Still licenses, Mom. And that's the excellent. Do you have any questions for the class? No. So, how to use antiseptics and disinfectants? Antiseptics are germicides that are safe to use on the skin, scalp, and hair. Antiseptics can reduce and kill bacteria on the skin and regulated by the Food and Drug Administration, FDA, if you want to be short. Liquid <clears throat> antiseptic soaps are excellent for cleaning visible dirt and oils, removing bacteria. For minors, for minor cuts and burns, antiseptic creams, gels, or liquids should be used to protect from infection. Antiseptics usually contain alcohol or benzalkonium, thank you, chloride, which is not as a drying alcohol as types of antiseptics in witch hazel and hydrogen peroxide. <laughs> Creams such as back tracing or neon Neonsin? Yeah. Neonsin. Yeah. Neonsin. Yeah. Thank y'all. Mm -hmm. Can prevent infection and aid the healing process. After applying any ointments or liquids to a clean cuts or burns, cover with a bandage. Tea tree oil is an antiseptic. Natural antiseptic. Every natural hair care salon should also have a first aid on hand. Oh, I never get this name right. Or Olivera. Orvella gel and tea tree oil always should always be on the shelf. Aloe vera gel can be found bottled or in the most natural plant state. The plant is a native of Africa and the Mediterranean region. It has been used for hundreds of years in those areas. The aloe plant is characterized by its long, taper, thick green leaves. When the leaves are broken, they exude a light, invulsive sap that can be applied internally to cuts and burns. The gel directly soothes itching and burning once it's applied. It aids in regeneration of the new tissue when scarring and normal pigmentation has been affected. Tea tree oil is known as medicine kit in a bottle. This oil is a native of Australia. Tea tree oil is a clear aromatic oil that increases the healing process. It soothes, bite, it soothes insect bites, herpes sores, cuts, burns, and fungal infections. And increase the oil, and the oil increases the process of healing burns or cuts because it escalates skin regeneration. Normal pigmentation loss can be returned if used constantly. Natural antiseptic. The natural stylus should have both ethyl grain and our all thank y'all alcohol available in for use in a salon although they are not specifically designed to disinfect professional tools. The EPA recognizes <clears throat> these oils as adequate disinfectants that will stop the spread of bacteria. However, the use of alcohol has some disadvantages. They are extremely flammable, evaporate quickly, and are slow acting and less <clears throat> effective disinfectant. Alcohol can corrode tools and make sharp edges become dull. The vapor form upon evaporation can cause headaches and nausea in high con concentrations or at the prolonged exposure. Alcohols are working more effectively as antiseptics. When considering any antiseptic for use in a salon, check the and abide by all state federal regulations for its use. 
Every style of the salon must read, understand, and follow the manufacturer's instructions when using disinfectants because not all disinfectants are made alike. Some can be used directly from the bottle, others must be diluted for effectiveness. If the word concentration concentrate is on the label, then you need to know the mixing ratio to dilute to dilute the detergent. Many disinfectants will specify how long the non porous safe surface or tools must stay in contact with the disinfectant in order for the solution to be effective. Okay, this is a long one. Disinfectant <laughs> will provide emphasis. Claims on every label. Emphasis claims state, claims state the ability of the product to provide the effect displayed on its label, in other words, to be effective. Natural hair care is a specialty service. It is important to select the appropriate disinfectant suited for this specialty. The following items will help you will help you decide which disinfectant is best for your salon. EPA approved, the product must be environmentally friendly or safe to be disposed of without upsetting the logical balance in the community. The disinfectant must be non-toxic without fumes. The disinfectant should cost, but it should be cost effective. The product must be non-corrosive to the plumbing system. The products have several retail and manufacturing sources available for reorders. The products must obtain efficiency and the presence of bio burden, which is a number of viable organ, organisms or in an object or surface or the organic material on the surface of an object before decontamination or sterilization. Whew. The product, let's see, the product should not require frequent changing at least a, at least a week or more, not daily. The product must be inexpensive. The product must include strips for checking effectiveness. Is that it? No, it is not. It's, it's not. <coughs> this is my last slide, but there we go. Salonas pose a lower lower infection risk when compared to compared to a hospital. Hospitals must meet much stricter infection control standards. Even though salons host the lesser risk of spreading certain type of infections, it is still very important to clean and disinfect all tools, implements, surface, and equipment correctly. When salon implements accidentally contact blood, block body fluids, or in healthy conditions, they should be properly cleaned and then completely immersed in EPA registration hospital disinfectant solutions that shows effectiveness against HIV, hepatitis, and tuberculosis. They can also be immersed in a 10% bleach solution. Always wear gloves and follow the proper universal precaution protocol for cleaning up and exposure incident. And that's it. Good job. Good job. They all, it was supposed to say tools, <laughs> equipment, and, and services. Implements must be thoroughly cleaned of all visible matter or residue before being placed in disinfectant solution. Safety tips for disinfectants. You should always keep an STS on, Lord Jesus. <laughs> on hand for the disinfectant you use. Wear gloves and safety glasses when mixing disinfectant. Should always avoid skin and eye contact and add disinfectant to water when diluting rather than adding water to disinfectant to prevent foaming, which can result in an incorrect mixing ratio. Mm -hmm. Cleaning before disinfectant. Um, residue will interfere with the disinfectant and prevent proper disinfection. Not all disinfectants are made equal. They differ on how they are used. Some are just for tools and implements. Others are, are for non porous surfaces and some are for glass and metal. Can y'all tell I was doing like two different things at one time? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we know what you mean. Yeah, we know what you mean. Go ahead. Goodness gracious. We know what you mean. Go ahead. At FYI, disinfectants are parasite, par uh, pesticides, Lord, considered as poisonous. Um, that can cause skin and eye damage. Some disinfectants. I don't know what they were supposed to say. Up here. Up here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they do appear, some disinfectants do uh, appear clear, while others, especially phenolic, phenolic disinfectants, are a little cloudy. Always use caution and follow safety tips. 
types of disinfectants are, is that quaternary? How do you say that? Quaternary, yeah. Yes. Yes. Ammonium compound, which is known as quads. Air, a cleaning solution for implements and tools. They are very effective. Um, they, they have one that's more advanced it's a more advanced formula. Um, it's also called multiple quads. Multiple quads contains sophisticated blends of quads that work together. Quads require tools and implements be submerged for 10 minutes and after you remove, you rinse and dry. You will store your implements in a clean closed container. Phenolic disinfectants are powerful, powerful tuberculocidal disinfectants. Forms of formaldehyde, they are very high in pH, can damage the skin and eyes, can be harmful to the environment. Phenolic disinfectants may, phenolic disinfectants have been very reliable over the years to disinfect the line, I don't know what they're supposed to say, the tools. However, phenol can damage plastic and rubber and can cause certain metals to rust. Mm -hmm. And bleach is also a disinfectant has to be uh, 5.2 sodium hypochlorite, which is considered as a household bleach. It is, very, it is a very effective disinfectant that can be used throughout your salon, can be corrosive and damaging to metal, can cause irritation to skin and eyes, fumes can cause lung damage, so be sure to follow manufacturer's instructions. <laughs> to be effective, the bleach must contain 5% sodium hypochlorite must be diluted properly to 10% solution consisting of nine parts water to one part bleach. Store bleach solution away from heat and light. You should always make a fresh bleach solution every 24 hours or whenever the solution has been contaminated. After mixing the solution, you should always put the date on it. So if it's not safe, yeah, so it's not safe from day to day, but be careful of fumes, irritation to eye, lung, and skin. <clears throat> Disinfect or dispose. Salons, salons use this two types of items. Multi-use and re reusable or single-use that's dis disposable. Multi-use items that can be cleaned, disinfected, disinfected, and used on more than one person, even if item is accidentally exposed to blood or bodily fluid. These items must have Hard non porous surfaces. Examples are shears, combs, or rollers. Single use, which is disposable. Items that can that cannot be used more than once. These items cannot be properly cleaned so that all visible residue is removed or they are damaged or contaminated by cleaning and disinfecting. Examples are tissues, paper towels, neckties. They must be thrown away after each use. Porous items are made up or comp constructed of material that has pores or openings. These items are absorbent. Some item, items can be softly cleaned, disinfected, and used again. Porous items come in contact with broken skin, blood, or bodily fluid must be discarded. Do not try and disinfect. Examples are towels or linens. And safety tips for disinfectants. <coughs> Always keep an SDS on hand for disinfectants you use. Wear gloves and safety glasses when mixing disinfectant. Avoid skin and eye contact. I always add disinfectant to water. I think this is slide where I was talking. I think so too. <laughs> <laughs> eye contact. Look, I, no, but I was, I was reading, like talking to my mother. You know, okay, so oh, I, you was talking into it, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I always add disinfectant to water when diluting rather than adding water to disinfectant to prevent foaming which can result in an incorrect mixing ratio. Use tongs, gloves, or use tongs or gloves or a draining basket to remove implements from disinfectant. So now y'all see why um, Ms. Harris got that basket. Because mm -hmm. in a book it actually say the basket. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I always measure and use disinfectant products according to label instructions. Follow manufacturer's instructions for mixing, using, and disposing. Never let quads, phenols, bleach, or any other disinfectant come in contact with your skin. If you do get disinfected on your skin, immediately wash the area with liquid soap and warm water, then rinse the area and dry it thoroughly. Never place any disinfectant or other product in an unmarked container. All containers should be labeled, jars, or containers used to disinfect. Implements are often incorrectly Oh, wet sanitizer. The 
purpose of the disinfectant con containers is to disinfect, not to clean. Disinfectants, disinfectant containers must be covered, but but not airtight. Yeah. Disinfecting ele electrical tools or non-electrical tools and implements. State rules require that all multi-use implements must be clean and disinfected before and after every service, even when they are used in the used on the same person. Mix all disinfectants according to manufacturer's direction. Electrical tools like hair clips. That is not electrical tool. Like, oh, clippers, my bad, I'm sorry. I got a lash in my eye. <laughs> I'm trying to get done. No. <laughs> electrical tools like hair clippers and other types of electric equipment have, have have contact points that cannot be immersed in liquid. These devices should be cleaned and disinfected using an EPA registered disinfectant designed for use on, on them. Y'all get what I'm saying? It mm -hmm. must it must mm -hmm. say that on the <laughs> um disinfecting workstation work services. Before beginning every client, all all work services must be cleaned and disinfected. Always clean and always clean the stalling station, shampoo, shampoo sinks, cheers, armrests, anywhere the customer's skin may, may touch. Cleaning towels, linens, and cape, capes. Clean <laughs> towels, <laughs> linens, and capes must be used for each client. A towel, linen, or cape that has been used on a client must not be used again until it has been properly laundered. Always store sold linen and towels or and cover all clothes container, cover it in a clean clothes container, away from clean linen and towels, even if the state regulator agency does not require you to. Hand washing. Properly washing your hands is one of the most important actions you can take to prevent spreading germs from one person to another. Proper hand washing removes germs from the folds and grooves of the skin and from under the edges of the nail plates by lifting and rinsing germs and contaminating contamination from the surface. You should wash your hands thoroughly before and after each use. After washing hands, you should always use a moisturizing hand lotion because the antibacterial soap can dry out your hands from repeated hand washing. Avoid using hot water to wash your hands because this is another practice that can damage your skin. That's it. Good job. know that means all all means everybody so that's why i got the little states little people that everybody nobody's excluded from the universe you know everybody's as one so these are basically guidelines that are issued by the center for disease control and prevention which is cdc and osha with the little world that goes around this means you should treat every client not one not two but every client treat every client with high standards the highest standards for their safety and yours to prevent from to prevent and protect yourself from diseases these airborne pathogens are in most cases asystematic asystematic means you can't see them you can't tell if i'm sick you can't tell if they sick mm -hmm. so you know just treat it with the highest level of respect and safety for everyone and coming on around now you done got exposed to it. So I'm gonna go over the steps of what you can do to keep yourself safe, your client safe, and your work area very, very clean. So 
So you done got exposed to blood here. This is your little decent exposure, maybe a mm -hmm. little nip, maybe a little burn or anything. So the first thing you're gonna do, you're gonna stop. You ain't gonna think about nothing. You're gonna automatically stop. Maybe you can let them know like, okay, it's, it's a situation. I maybe didn't hit you, I didn't clip you. It's some, some, some blood that's going on. Your second step you're gonna do, very first thing you're gonna do is stop. Second thing you're gonna do, you're gonna put on gloves to protect yourself and your client from blood. Here's your gloves, make sure you get your gloves. Step two, <laughs> you're gonna stop the bleeding. You're gonna apply pressure to the area. You're gonna apply pressure to the area with a clean cotton wipe or a piece of gall. This is my little cotton ball with some little mm. antiseptic, the antiseptic gauze that I still got my gloves on, so I'm gonna just read up under here right quick. When the bleeding stop, you're gonna clean the injured area with antiseptics, antiseptic wipe. Then you're gonna bandage the cut with an adhesive bandage. Mm -hmm. But you can find your antiseptic and your first aid kit. Every salon has a first aid kit. Every client or person in there, or not client, every professional mm -hmm. stylist will have a first aid kit at your station. So you can always go to that. That's like your maybe your second model for safety and precautions. So and after that, after you done bandage them up with an adhesive bandage. You're gonna clean and disinfect your workstation, but you're gonna follow the EPA for your cleaning solution and your disinfectant solution by using EPA registered disinfectant designed for cleaning blood and bodily fluids. Just not for services, it's a certain type of disinfectant, which I think is a hospital mm -hmm. disinfectant mm -hmm. that you would use for blood and bodily fluids. After then, you're gonna dispose all single use contaminated objects which would be much like your cotton balls, your swabs, your antiseptic wipe, everything you use to clean your client's area from when they got hurt or injured. Also, you're gonna keep your gloves on before removing, so you still got your gloves on at this point. Before removing gloves, all multi-use tools and implements that have came in contact with blood or bodily fluids are thoroughly cleaned and completely immersed in EPA-approved disinfectant for 10 minutes, or you can use a 10% bleach for recommended time by product, which is followed by the manufacturer's directions on that product. Now you can remove your gloves. Be sure to not touch other work areas, surfaces in your salon or implements before you take off your gloves. Don't touch anything, just the area from your client, your workstation to keep everything safe and prevent spread. Remove your gloves at this point, place, place everything in a double bag with other contaminated items for disposal. Um, in the book it reads that you can get a plastic bag, but also double bag it, but don't put it like in your regular trash can. You have an alternative with actually contaminated items, maybe like a non-pokey. If you have something pokey, you put your stuff in a non-pokey or Sharpie box, what they call it, biohazardous box. And then you're gonna recommend your client to see a physician if redness, swelling, or pain occurs to them. This is your little, little physician hospital. And then just to keep everything good, just to make sure that you stay professional. Professional Salon Image is a national, as a natural hair care salon professional, you have many responsibilities. But the most important responsibility is protecting and safeguarding your client's health and safety. Remember, if you do not protect your client or yourself, you are liable for everything that has happened for that day, hour, or minute. And this is a presentation from your universal precautions of the world and your work salon. <laughs> Sure did. Did. You got any questions to ask? Woke up the morning, can't remember nothing. Cause the bitches just going from London. And I think I remember they calling me daddy. The mansion was covered in money. Went to sleep with my jewelry and chains on. Had to wake up and recount the money. I got a bitch, she gon' kill for real. Talking about Clyde and Bunny. Cool with the kid, copy. Got you. Pull up with a stick, stop it. Stop it. Rich nigga shit. Solid. Rich nigga. Oh, honey, pockets riding. Got it. I go to space with the stars. Star. Saturn, Moon, Earth, and Mars. Mars. NASA take off with the rocket.
Half a million on the necklace. Hey. Rich nigga with success. success. Say she wanna feel special. What? The coco make her feel special. Coco. I kinda hunted a better one hundred. Back into hunted a better two hundred. I might go put all my chains on. I just might change up the weather. Change. She pop a perky pussy wetter. Drip. I make the bitch at Coachella. Coachella. If she Nutella, she probably do better. But can I get an E for F? I pray to God to watch my sins. God, the phone that gets me not a weapon, no weapon. Ask him where do I begin? Where? Never trying to take my blessings. blessings. They don't know the meaning of the white. Nah. You don't really live this life. No. Niggas in the hood shoot twice. To my niggas in the hood shoot precise. Real wise, we ain't taking no advice. Nah. I realize that these hoes ain't right. Don't we'll need to ask cause they know what's the price. Right. Ain't got a snow, they already know it's right. I talk to God cause I've been baptized. baptized. I got mob tied to the north side. I'm so with the sticks on the niggas straight slime. They gon' make the north side high crime. Uh, been I hit a lit with these niggas dropping 10. Uh, hit a lit with these niggas dropping dime. Talking on the friend, I'ma break a back in. Looking at the watch, I can't waste time. Take, take, take off. Woke up this morning, can't remember nothing. Two bitches just flowing from London. <laughs> nothing I remember, they callin' me daddy. The mansion was covered in money. I went to sleep with my jewelry and chains on. Had to wake up and recap the money. I got a bitch, she gon' kill for real. Talking about Clyde and Bunny. Cool with the kid, cop it. Got to. Pull up with a stick, stop it. Stop it. Rich nigga shit, solid. Rich nigga, oh, honey, pockets riding. Got it. I go to space with the stars. Star. I smoke a blunt on my pilot. Saturn, moon, earth, and Mars. NASA take off with the rocket. Uh, I ain't really with the rest of the dollars Knock them out but then I throw them out 
the bow paddle. Go to Tijuana, put the kilo on the saddle. Sack him, hit a nigga, cop a pterodactyl. Back him, chop a bite down like an apple. Match with the eggs, put the horses in the cabinet. Like Narco, Narco, got dope like Pablo. Pablo, cut dope like Pablo. Cut dope, chop trees with the Draco. Draco, on the knife at Diego. Diego. Say I still a wiggle. No way. We'll be in rapping kilo. Yeah. Shut up, no sweat potato. Bless up, bless up, bless up, bless up.